So one thing that uh, we as a society are good at is generating a lot of data. But looking at a large series of numbers can sometimes really just leave you looking at it and saying, I don't know, what's it all mean? For instance, the data that we're gonna look at in just a little bit comes from Old Faithful, and it's the length, uh, the duration of an eruption in numbers of seconds. Old Faithful is a geyser that you can visit in Yellowstone Park. It's really, really cool, amazing, and worth the trip if you get a chance. But just looking at all this data doesn't really help us out much. So a lot of times what we'll do is we'll condense it. So that's gonna be a big job of statistics as part of statistics called descriptive statistics. So we wanna pare things down and clump them up just to try and get a handle on what's going on with the data. Now in problem number six in the book, they've already done that for us in a specific set of data. And this, let me get this out of the way here for myself. Uh, problem number six looks like this. So we've got the age in which somebody won the best actor awards in terms of the Oscars and then the frequency. So there's several things we'd, I'd like you to know about this, including the class width, the class midpoints, class boundaries, and uh, the total number of individuals in this, uh, in this data set. So for that, I've already copied things over to here. And let's start with the class width. What you can do to find the class width is just subtract any two adjacent uh, lower class boundaries. So 30 minus 20 or 40 minus 30, 50 minus uh, 40, et cetera. The class width is 10. That's how wide your classes are. So each decade, you're getting in your new class. Um, <clears throat> class midpoints, those are, those are gonna be what's in the middle of each of these. So the midpoint, and I don't know if this is a term that's still used much or not, but sometimes it's called the class mark. The midpoint is just what's in the middle of these two, two limits. So if you add these up and divide by two, so 49 divided by two would be 24.5, uh, 34.5, 44.5, 54.5, and so on. It's just gonna increase by 10 each time. And yes, 10 is the class width. Now we've also got something a little bit different, which is your class boundary. And that's where you say, okay, you're either in this class or in this one. So the class boundary, class boundary is gonna be that point right in the middle of these things that says, okay, here's the cutoff. If we're age 29.5 or more, then you're going up into this class. Less than this, you're down into this class. So the next one would be 39.5, 49.5, and so on. Now there's actually a nice procedure for how many classes you're gonna break up your frequency into, your frequency distribution. Um, see if I've got the page number for that someplace handy. Uh, uh, I think it's on page 43. Let me take a quick look here to see if that's correct. Uh, page 43. So we'll hop back to page 48 in just a minute. Mm. Yeah, but your procedure, and this is just kind of a, a nice guide. You don't wanna use too few class widths and you don't wanna use too many of them use too many of them, you're diluting your data to the point that you're just looking at the raw data. If you use too few, you're gonna be clumping everything into just a couple of categories. So the author gives you, you know, a good idea on how to do that. Um, they get a little bit fancier, 
according to Sturgis guideline, but I'm not going to go there. Um, you know, somewhere typically between five and 20 is what you're going to want to use. But if you want to be a little bit more specific, you can follow these guidelines. Let's go back to problem number uh, six here. Make sure we answer all the questions. Um, mm -hmm. So also identify the number of individuals included in the summary. So how many actors are there in this summary? What do you think we'd do to figure that out? Add the frequency. Yeah, add up the frequencies. Now, that total is 88. And let me introduce you a little notation that we're going to use a lot of. And it's a Greek letter S. It's a capital letter S. And it's called sigma. By the end of this course, you're gonna know a lot more Greek letters. We're gonna use alpha, beta, mu, sigma. <sighs> I don't know if we're gonna use tau or epsilon, but um, we're gonna use uppercase and lowercase sigma. This is an uppercase sigma. Lowercase sigma is gonna be used for something else. But in any case, uh, there's gonna be 88 people in this study. We can extend this a little bit if we wanted to and look at the relative frequency. And what you would do over here is just look at percentages or just uh, a fraction. So one out of 88 uh, people who won an Oscar uh, for you know, best actor uh, were in their 20s. And 28 out of 88 were in their 30s and so on. Seems like the sweet spot is in your 40s, right? 36 out of 88. And then it drops off 15 out of 88. And 6 out of 88. And you're working against the odds here, right? Now you can also turn these into percentages by multiplying by 100, but that would give you a relative sense of just how often or not these kind of events occur. <clears throat> but let's see how to do the, at least some of this on Google Sheets. So let's go to our, our tables here. We've already copied this data in and I'm gonna eliminate this, this one right here. So if you've got something already here, just click the frequency button there and uh, that should delete all this other stuff. And I'll delete that as well. All right, so you've got all this data here and the data represents the time that an eruption of um, eruption of Old Faithful lasts in its time in seconds. So you can see this person, or the people that watched this eruption got it ripped off. It was just over two minutes. More typically, you're gonna get an eruption that lasts closer to four minutes. That's the typical one. But if you wanna set up a, a frequency distribution, you're gonna need to do two things. And this is gonna be true if you're working in Excel or in Google Sheets. First of all, you're gonna plug in all these class boundaries, these upper class boundaries. So anything up to and including 125 is gonna be in this class. So zero to 125, that's gonna be here. Now I've set my class width to be 25. So anything from 126 to 150, that's gonna be in this next class and so on. All the way up to 275 and that should be the, the last that I'll need here. In fact, I won't even need that one. If I want everything more than 250, then it's enough just to go up to this one. And then this last, this last range is gonna be anything over 250. Really won't need that one. Now the command here that we want, and this is kind of nice, it follows along with what you would expect. The one thing you have to be careful of in working with 
uh, Google Sheets is that all your commands start out by typing an equals. And that's also true in Excel. Now I want a frequency. So type in FRE and it's gonna finish it off for me. It says, oh, you want a frequency. So yeah, I'll click that little cloud and click frequency. Now you're gonna have to tell it two things. You have to tell it, first of all, where the data is and then the boundaries that exist for your data. So the data is in that first column and it goes all the way down to A51. So it's gonna be A2 to A51. So let's type that in, A2 colon A51. Now you can also click and drag to get that as well. Nothing wrong with that. So that's where your data is. Then put in a comma. Now you have to tell it how to divide things up, where to group it. And that's where you're going to use the bins. And I've already done that. I've already labeled those things and put them in, in column D. So let me show you an alternative to just typing in. One, else, one other thing you can do is just click and drag. So I'm gonna click and drag these bins. And that's just gonna type in for me the numbers of those cells that I see anyway, D4 to D10. And I'll click a right parenthesis just because uh, that's my habit from my time in computer science. And when you get that, press the enter key and it should fill out our frequency distribution here. Now, I'm not going to press enter, so that way you can take a look at the command I've got here. Make sure that you're matching it on your computer or tablet. Give you a couple more seconds to match things up, and then we'll press the magic button and see what it does. Bam. All right. So you should get something that looks kind of like what I've got here. There's one lonely observation down in the zero to 125 range, but most of our data lies in what range? Where do most of the data lie? Two, 225. Yeah, so 240 seconds is about four minutes. So in this range of about four minutes, that's what most people are typically gonna experience. Now, I said we didn't really need to go all the way up to this last one. So let me go up here and edit things. Let's just get rid of that last cell. So instead of going all the way down to D10, I'll go down to D9. So I'll replace the 10 with a nine. If you make that change, it's gonna get rid of this trailing zero here, which I don't really need. Bam, nice. So there's your frequencies. Now we have some numbers over here. Let me just uh, delete these real quick by hand. And show so you. about the, the, the frequency tab, is there a formula to get that? Frequency here? Yeah. No, the, the, the formula you're gonna put is right in this cell and that'll generate uh, the data for the remainder of these cells. But this is just a label. This is just telling you what I've got going here. So all three of these are just labels. This is the range, okay, this yeah. is the frequency, and yeah. this is your, your bins, is the fancy term that Excel uses for this. Uh, really, it's your class boundaries is what it is. It's saying, okay, this is the cutoff okay. between one and the other. All right. So what would a um, so what would a test uh, test question look like for frequency? Would you expect us to find that out? Um, I could. Or? You know, uh, I'm not really interested in testing you on Excel or on Google Sheets. What I might do instead is just give you a homework problem on this stuff. Uh, okay. But this class is about statistics, and as, yeah. as these things are. I don't want you to feel stressed out about learning how to use Google Sheets and being tested on it during an exam. 
that's pressure I don't want to put on you. So um, I would like you to be able to use it. And more importantly, you should be able to take and interpret the data you're seeing from it. So in particular, when you look at this, you go, oh, well, the most frequent thing that I see there is, you know, in the 245 to 249 yeah. range. Okay, okay, no, so I, I understand that now, okay. Okay, good. Now, um, let's just play around with this just a little bit. If I made this 220, uh, if I made this 124, can anyone predict what's gonna happen to this data? If I replace that 125 with a 124. Well, what should happen Change. is uh, that observation should jump from this one to this one because I've changed the upper class limit. Now the most that's gonna be in here is 124. That's why that one observation jumped up here. Yeah, let me go back and change that back to um, 125. All right, so that resets everything. What's cool and convenient about working with Excel or Google Sheets is stuff that you can do like this. Suppose I want, for instance, how many people were in this study? How many observations? There's a lot of ways I can do this, but one way I can do this is hit equals and then, well, what do I want here? I want the sum. Uh, how come it's not, right, there you go, equals, I want the sum, parenthesis, of what? I want the sum of all this data. So you can either type in, that'd be C4 to C10, or you can kind of click and drag, which is much easier. So there's 50 pieces of data in this data set. Yay, that's nice. That's the sum of your data. What else can you do that's kind of cool and convenient? We can look at the relative frequency and I'll just put a label in here, relative frequency, like that. All your Excel and uh, Google Sheets commands starts out with equals. So let's type in equals. If I want the relative frequency, it's gonna be this divided by what? What should I divide by if I'm getting the relative frequency? Divided by 50. Divided by 50, good. So I get 0.02. And I wanna do that for all these cells, right? So I get all the relative frequencies. Now, a nice thing that you can do that makes this really quick, uh, there's two things you can do, but one of them is you can click the bottom of this and just drag that cell all the way down and it's gonna repeat that calculation for everything. So that's really cool, very, very handy. Or if you want, uh, instead of just keeping this as a decimal, you could multiply the result by 100 so times 100, and then you turn it into a percent that way. And again, I'll just click and drag, copy that all the way down. And now you can see that 68% of the time, the, or the, uh, the duration of the eruption is between 225 and 249 seconds. So there's a good chance you're gonna see a, a relatively lengthy eruption. Professor? Yes. Quick question, because I, I don't use this platform often. Are you able to use this like you do Excel? So if you don't want to drag, you can just double click on that little box and it'll take it down? Um, that's, that's just what I did. No, I mean, because you dragged it. Are we able to do the double click and then it populates it without having to double click? Or is it different? You know, I'm not sure. Um, okay. But one, thing you, one different thing you can do, and maybe you'll like this as well, is if you highlight this, you can copy and then paste on the rest of your cells. So let me clear this out, clear all these out and show you how that works. Um, if you copy, then select all these new cells and paste, there you go. So maybe that works for you as well. Uh, 
let's take a look at the chat here. Somebody might have an idea. Um, what do I type in cell E4? Uh, E4. Oh, that's just uh, the number or the frequency here. So I clicked, um, I'll show you how I calculate this one again. It's equals, then I click this cell divided by 50 because that's how many uh, observations there were in this data set and then times 100 to turn that into a percentage. So that's what we got in cell uh, E4 there. And then you copy that for the rest of these things. <sighs> okay, how are we looking on that one? Doing okay there? All right, uh, like I said, probably what I'll do you know, instead of testing you on this, creating this stuff in a testing situation is maybe just give you a homework assignment to uh, find some data and create your own frequency distribution based on that data. That way it's gonna be low stress um, and easy points, I hope. And also a chance to learn some good skills about Excel or Google Sheets. Any other questions on this one? All right, that's good.